The second type of UML charts and diagrams is the behavioral diagrams. These diagrams are activity diagram, state machine diagram and use case diagram with the written uh, descriptions. These diagram types are meant to describe the behavior of the system and it's usually applied to give a general idea on how the system su should behave or react to different types of user inputs or user activities or whatever uh, the system reads from its input uh, input uh, sensors. So, the activity diagram is actually interestingly not only meant to define how the system should behave, but it's also useful to define how the different processes of the software work should happen. So activity diagram, like uh, in the example here, does not necessarily always define how different things happen within the software it, or in, even in the system. It may uh, define how we will do business or processes, for example acceptance testing or acceptance for designs and construction and things like that. And even in this uh, example here, we are, we are not doing software, we are actually commissioning a software architect to develop a system plan and getting the results how this uh, if the proposal is accepted so not only does the activity diagram may define something like activities in system it also models business flows logistics flows from from order to warehouse to delivery and logistics it's all useful for all sorts of activities within the organization which is developing the software. Besides uh, de uh, defining how the software process happens, the other activity diagram is also state chart diagram or, or as it's nowadays known state machine diagram. As I said earlier, the UML hasn't changed that much. The UML2 is more or less an extension to UML1. So if you are referring to UML1 era documentation, they will be talking about the state chart diagram. Whereas the m more recent UML2 documentation talks about state machine diagrams. These uh, state machines are really, really low-level operations definitions. They actually are used to define usually activities happening in places like embedded systems like remote control or elevator control buttons and it's more or less a definite machine which includes all the transitions from one stage to another to different states and different reasons why things are happening. It's usually uh, really useful when it's necessary. It's meant to define systems so that it doesn't end up in deadlock situations or that we know what the system should be doing even if we don't have debug console or any logistics or error catching system available when we are testing or defining embedded uh, software. On, however, on the more traditional software development like doing uh, C++ programming for software or doing mobile applications or games, the state chart diagrams or the state machines aren't usually that necessary, but like I said earlier, when you need them they are godsend as a tool to define things. The most, however, the most important uh, behavioral diagram is the use case diagram which everyone uses. Or well, if, they, if, if someone uses something from the UML, they usually use at least the use case diagrams. The use case diagram has a really simple idea. We have a system boundary here, cellular telephone, we have different activities, all the different things our customers or interest group representatives can do with the system. 
referenced as a one balloon in the diagram and all the actors be it one singular user like a user administrator or some larger entity like cellular network bank or server system are represented by this actor here and all the different activities which are related to each other are defined or connected in the use case diagram and all the actors who can do different things are connected to different use cases. So basically this is one of the first diagrams of the system and it's, it identifies the different stakeholders and different activities. And based on this diagram, although the, this second next part is not diagram itself, it's actually also used to create the use case definitions. So for each one of these balloons here, we define uh, the brief generic description, flow of event, events, what should happen, and uh, give details on how the system should behave, what happens if the, there's problems, like the user doesn't give correct password or something like that, and list of different possible outcomes, preconditions that are needed, post conditions that the system goes to, and the special requirements, which may include several uh, different requirements that are needed for the use case to actually happen.